Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. A longtime Republican leader in the Florida State Legislature is attempting to oust a member of Congress targeted by the National Republican Congressional Committee. Former State Senator Daniel Webster, a Republican, is trying to unseat Democrat Alan Grayson in Florida's 8th Congressional District, home of Florida's famed independent I-4 corridor. Mr. Webster spent 28 years in the Florida legislature and has been endorsed by former Florida Governor Jeb Bush and former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Welcome to Newsmax TV, sir. Great to be on. A recent poll finds you leading Representative Grayson 43% to 36%. What do you think separates you from your opponent? And you're in the home stretch right now. What do you need to do to secure a win? Well, I think what we need to do is finish strong, and that's what we plan on doing. We have uh, about a thousand uh, grassroots workers that are helping us. Uh, we are raising money. We certainly can use all the money we can get, but uh, we're headed towards uh, hopefully a victory by, by just overwhelming uh, the, uh, the other side. Why should voters elect you as opposed to Congressman Grayson? Well, First of all, he's in Washington and I'm not. And he's going to vote for Nancy Pelosi and I'm not. Matter of fact, he votes with her 98% of the time. I wouldn't. Uh, and then in the end, you'd have to agree with his policies, which are, hey, let's borrow our way out of debt. We're borrowing $4 billion a day. And, uh, and the other thing you'd have to agree with him on is the fact that the unemployment rate here in Congressional District 8 is 12 percent, and he's done nothing about it except pass its stimulus back package that was a waste of time. So I believe uh, there are lots of reasons why I should replace Alan Grayson. Now, your opponent has been described by some as an extreme liberal. He has said some pretty wacky things. He said the Republicans wanted to put the elderly to death early. Have his statements been an issue in the campaign? Uh, they've, I, I, you could call them an issue, but I would say they're more the, of a negative for him. I don't think they've played well in this district, and uh, it's hurt him. Uh, and he is uh, not stocked with the antics. He's used them uh, actually to prosecute a campaign against me that's totally negative, and uh, for the most part, it hasn't worked. Now, Tea Party activists want to depose Alan Grayson on whether he had a role in getting a Tea Party candidate, Peg Dunmire, to run in, a, in an attempt to siphon votes from you. A Grayson spokesperson called the allegations part of conspiracy theories tossed around by the Republican establishment. Is there any validity to the activists' allegations that Grayson urged Dunmire to run? Well, I don't, I don't know whether he did or not. I, I could not say that. However, I think he will try to use it in every way to his advantage, trying to draw people to that person, because I think he's peaked out. He's got as many votes as he possibly can get, so now he's got to pull votes away from me in order to win. Uh, but I don't think it's going to work. Now, he is no stranger to controversy, and one of his recent campaign ads, which compared your Christian values to the theology of the Taliban, has created quite a stir. How do you feel about it? It's been taken off the airwaves, but does Congressman Grayson owe you or Christians an apology? Well, I don't care if he apologizes. He just needs to admit he's a liar. I mean, basically, you, you think about it, how many lies do you have to tell before you are a liar? Well, he's, he lied in his first commercial, he lied in the second one, he lied in the third one, now he's lied in the fourth one. Uh, I think he's a liar, and he just needs to admit it. Okay, the, Na the National Republican Congressional Committee named him a top target this year and reserved $800,000 worth of airtime for anti-grace and TV commercials. The organization, Americans for Prosperity, dropped $250,000 for negative ads as well. Why do you think this race is so important for the GOP? I think it's a microcosm of the country. It's uh, 35, 36 percent uh, Democrats, about 35 percent Republican, and the rest are independent. It's almost a split uh, all three ways. And, and I think that's, that's a picture of where we are in America. And, and to win this one is, is, is a def I think is a picture of the fact that we can win the entire country. Mr. Webster, if elected, what would your priorities be in Washington? We've got to turn off the spigot. We're borrowing way too much money and we're spending every dime of it. And it's a sad thing to do trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars each year. And then they've just passed a continuing resolution to keep going, to keep doing exactly what they've been doing. So I think turning off the spigot is the most important uh, issue facing our country. A big issue for many Americans. It's definitely on their minds right now, jobs and unemployment. What do you think is the best way to create jobs? And what is your take on the current economic situation that we're in? 
Well, I think we're in. Uh, I think we're in a recession. It's pretty obvious with the unemployment rates, especially in our own congressional district. But uh, I think the very best thing that could be done is to replace the Democrat Congress and have a new speaker and a new majority. You've been hailed as a champion of religious conservatives, having sponsored legislative efforts to prolong the life of Terry Schiavo in 2005. You have also gone on record opposing gay marriage and supporting covenant marriage. Is this nation in a moral crisis right now? And if so, how would a GOP sweep change things? Well, I think, in my mind, I think Washington is a picture of what's broken. They're the ones that are broken. Uh, I think America itself is resilient. It's going to bounce back. But I think the leadership in Washington has been the problem. It's been the problem for the last uh, four years, actually, as far as the Congress, last two years as far as the administration. And I believe we've got to do something about that. With a Republican Congress, we can do it. Last question, Mr. Webster. You've adopted the mantra of the Tea Party saying, quote, it is not our country, I'm sorry, it is our country, not theirs, so let's take it back. If Republicans take back the House, which they're expected to do, and perhaps the Senate, do you see Tea Party values becoming a cornerstone of Republican ideals moving forward? Well, I think the, the key is this. We've got to get there first. And then I think we're going to adopt some principles that are going to be uh, helping us govern for a long time. If we, if we do it right, and if we push away from the power politics of the past and say, okay, what we're going to do is put forward some principles and we're going to live by them, we're going to govern by them, I believe we've got a great opportunity of turning this country around. All right, Daniel Webster, thanks so much for joining us and good luck with your campaign. Thanks a lot. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.